and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Wednesday, June 15th, the 11th week of Ordinary Time, and the feast day of St. Germain Cousin. She was around in the late 1500s, died in 1601. She was in her early 20s when she died. She's a French, she, was a French, she is a French saint, but from her birth, she seemed to mark out, marked out for suffering, which is something that our world needs to learn, especially Christians, that to be a Christian, that means you will suffer um, physically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever way, but it's tying it and fixating it to the cross, to Jesus, in our hope and faith and trust in him. But anyway, St. Germain Cousin, she came into the world with a deformed hand um, and a, a disease called scrofula, if I pronounce that right. Uh, but then also while she was an infant, she lost her mother. Um, her mom died and then her father soon remarried, um, and his second wife treated Germaine very cruelly, um, and she eventually died of a sickness um, later on, like I said, in her early 20s. But she is the patron saint of abandoned people and abuse victims. Today's gospel is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 6 and 16 through 18. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no, no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the, and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray... Do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that others may see them. Amen. I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen. I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will, re will repay you. So we have a teaching about almsgiving, about prayer, and about fasting, which are like the three criteria that are heavily stressed upon primarily during Lent, so that we can really fix our hearts toward Jesus and to God the Father and really form our spiritual lives. Um, you know, and, and in our own, own human nature, it's so easy that to want to be seen um, and for, for us to do things so that other people see them and then we get rewarded for them. But God is telling us it's not all about that. Um, he really wants us to, to transform ourselves in our relationship with him because that should be the main relationship that drives everything and everyone else around us. Where if people don't see that we're a Christian by how we live our lives, you know, they don't need to know what we do behind the scenes. Um, just like any, any family or any marriage, you know, how people perceive you might be much different than the reality. And God wants to make sure that the reality is that we have hearts devoted to him. That's why it's so vital, I think, for married couples to ask their spouse how they're doing, but generally want to know that. And if they're anxious and have a lot of anxiety and if they're stressed, maybe that's your way of being invited to be better. Because no one knows you better than your spouse and those closest to you that you love. And that's done in secret. We like to keep a lot of that in, of a lot of that in secret, and hopefully that it's not this false dichotomy and like this, you know, ironic polar opposite approach of your social life and your private life. Um, and if there's a major disconnect with that, you know, you got to take that to the with the Lord and to the Lord, because we should be the same in private and in public. But no, not everybody has the right to it. So anyway, Jesus, God the Father, wants us to be totally in love and enamored with him in both private and in public. 
And we, it doesn't matter what the world thinks. So what is it that you need to work on in your own relationship with the Lord so that no matter where you are, you know that you're His. Have a good day. God bless. Keep it real. In the Father, Son, and Spirit, Amen.